GPT-4 has finally been released after years of anticipation and development. But how does it stack up against its predecessors? And why are there people saying that it hasn't really lived up to the hype? And how can you start utilizing it in your daily life? That's exactly what we're going to be talking about in this video. Here are the six key things that you need to know about the GPT-4 release. Firstly, availability and API access. GPT-4 is available to access now through the ChatGPT Pro version, which is $20 per month. If you're anything like me and couldn't be bothered paying the subscription, then now's your excuse to actually get in there and try it out. You get faster access to ChatGPT as normal, but you also get access to GPT-4 within the ChatGPT uh, model selector. However, if you don't wanna pay this $20 per month, you can be sneaky about it like I have and applied for API access. I now have access to the API, so I can write up a little uh, chatbot script and start using this API for free, essentially. I've also got a video coming soon for all of the cool things that I've been able to build with this GPT-4 API. API access. So if you want to see any of that and don't want to miss it, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell down below. Secondly, enhanced performance. Let's talk about how impressive GPT-4 actually is. This model has outperformed its predecessors in a number of ways. Firstly, it is able to ace the bar exam with a top 10% performance. It's been able to pass the ACAP exams, which are good enough to get college credits with. And its ability to understand code is evident in its leak code programming question results, which are far beyond previous models. So it seems that in terms of intelligence, this model is more intelligent. It understands things better and more like a human than a the previous models like GPT 3.5. Thirdly, the increased input limit on this model is insane. We have seen an explosion in the word limit from GPT 3 to GPT 4, from 3,000 words to 25,000 words. If you've ever tried to build applications with GPT 3, you'll know that this is one of the major issues we run into constantly and there's all sorts of things, there's entire uh, ecosystem of things built around this issue to, in order to get around this limit. By expanding the token limit this much, it opens up so many opportunities for people to build applications without all the sort of additional stuff you used to have to use in order to get around that token limit. Essentially, this is going to lower the bar and make it easier for people to build applications because you don't have to do all the complex stuff to get around these limits. Now, the current versions of GPT-4 that we have access to are limited to 8,000 tokens, I believe, or at least that's what I've seen when I've been playing around with the API. This is because OpenAI is going to slowly scale up the use of this model. There's so much attention on it right now. There's actually a limit of uh, 25 messages every three hours on ChatGPT Pro currently, but I assume they're going to be making this 25,000 word limit standard across the board very soon. Fourth is its multimodal functionality. Here is where things get wild. GPT-4's groundbreaking ability to now accept images as well as text as input. A crazy example that was shown within the developer live stream for GPT-4's launch was Greg Brockman, the co-founder of OpenAI, using a, a hand-drawn image of a website, showing it to GPT-4, and it was able to build a functioning version of that website in a few seconds. There was another point in the developer live stream where GPT-4 was shown a meme of an iPhone with a, a large old style uh, charger cord put in it, and it was able to analyze those images and explain why it was funny. I think that these models being able to understand memes now could have some very interesting flow on effects for internet culture, but that's yet to be seen. Now, unfortunately, despite all the hype, this feature is not actually available right now. So as you'll see in ChatGPT Pro, there's no image upload button. So I guess they're working on rolling out the implementation of this, but it will be coming very soon. It's hard to wrap your head around just how groundbreaking this is and the kinds of use cases that uh, will flow on from this ability. But if you want me to make a video on that, be sure to let me know down below. I'd love to do some brainstorming and come up with a bunch of ways that I could see this being used and affecting different markets like marketing, development, etc. So let me know down below if you want that video. Fifth is customizability. With great power comes great customizability. Developers who are building on top of GPT-4 through the API now have access to a system message which allows for much greater customizability of the kind of outputs. As mentioned in the developer live stream and on the OpenAI documentation, this system message is not fully set up yet and it's not quite working as well as they, as they plan to have it in the future. Over time, they're looking to increase how much effect this system message has on the kind of outputs. Now, the key thing about the system message and the prompt engineering that you have to do to sort of get it right is that it will give a top-down vision of what this particular application or this, this chatbot is going to do meaning that there's not going to be as many chances for people to deviate from the purpose. So if you're setting it into a certain mode, people are going to have a harder time getting in and out of it because of that system message being set. So by telling it what you want it to do and what you don't want it to do in that system message is going to be carried through the entire conversation and ensure that you get the kind of outputs and experience, customer experience that you really want out of it. This is going to really open up the doors to greater customization and utilization of this AI technology. And finally, it's reduced bias and better fact checking. An essential aspect of any good AI is trustworthiness. GPT-4 is now 82% less likely to give disallowed responses and 40% more likely to give accurate responses. 
responses. These improvements make the AI much more safer, reliable, and trustworthy for daily use. If you've used ChatGPT at all, you'd be very familiar with the hallucinations that it's known for. It would just make up some stuff that never existed and tell it to you like it's a fact. Now, while GPT-4 and ChatGPT Pro has been seen as being too stale and boring and very restrictive in its responses compared to the previous 3.5 model that we've been using. What I think we're going to see is that GPT-4 with its very scientific and uh, sort of bland responses is going to be uh, used in a certain use case. And then the older models like ChatGPT 3.5 that you're familiar with using uh, that are good at different things are going to have its own use case as well. So I think we'll see a bit of a divergence in how these things are being applied, but it's good as developers and as business people looking to build within the space that we have different, uh, different flavors available to us essentially through these models. Now, despite its fantastic capabilities, GPT-4 does have its share of downsides. Firstly are the slower processing speeds. GPT-4 does know how to deliver, but it comes at the cost of slower output speeds compared to the lightning quick GPT 3.5 turbo, which we've all been using recently. This could be caused by a number of factors. Firstly, just the model is more complex and sophisticated, so therefore it takes longer. Secondly, the token limit is greatly increased at the moment. So from 3,000 to 25,000 is a huge jump, more tokens mean more time to process, etc. And finally, because we are in the early stages of its release, uh, OpenAI doesn't necessarily have the compute power and the ability to push us out on a large scale. We might see a, a jump from GPT-4 to GPT-4 Turbo like we saw with GPT-3. So I, I think in time we'll see this uh, end up being a much faster model. Secondly is its greatly increased price point for people using the API. Building applications with GPT-4 is a lot more expensive than using the previous models. OpenAI bills people for their API access. Just to put it in perspective, 100,000 requests with the GPT 3.5 turbo model would have cost you $400 and the exact same 100,000 requests with GPT 4 will cost you $7,500. This balloons to $15,000 for that same 100,000 if you're using a 32K context window version of GPT-4. Now, as I mentioned before, I think this will come down to that sort of two different use cases, things like GPT-3.5 Turbo, which are so cheap and so fast, will have their own use cases, but people who are relying on the accuracy and knowledge and an increased uh, ability to understand things and, and give accurate responses of GPT-4 will be willing to pay that extra price to build applications like medicinal uh, medicinal industry or a legal industry where you need that accuracy. And of course, over time, you would expect the cost of these models to come down. And thirdly, limited internet access and training data. Unfortunately, OpenAI has not built GPT-4 to have the ability to search the internet to get recent information, as we probably all hope. If you're talking to it through ChatGPT Pro, you'll see that it has basically the same knowledge cutoff as the previous model. So it doesn't have all the more recent information from sort of 2022 and 2023 so far, which is a, a pretty significant limitation, I'd say. Now, if we're looking at something like Bing Chat, which I believe has been confirmed recently that it is actually and has been using GPT-4 the whole time, being able to query something and get the latest information that has actually come from sources on the web is a huge, huge factor. And I think might be a little deal that Microsoft has with OpenAI. Look, please don't add this feature into your publicly available API access. We want to keep it sort of locked away in this Bing, Bing chat version that we have. Will we get access to the search functionality eventually? I think so, but as of the current version, we don't. So does GPT-4 really live up to the hype? I would say what we've seen here is more of an incremental step from GPT-3.5 to GPT-4, not on the level that we saw from GPT-2 to GPT-3. In my interview with Paul Jacobian, the founder of Copy AI, which I'll link up here, great interview if you haven't seen it. When Paul was playing around with GPT-2, he said that one in 10 answers would be good. And he said the jump from GPT-2 to GPT-3 was from one in 10 answers being good to nine in 10 answers being good. So that is a, a huge jump we saw from GPT-2 to GPT-3. Have we seen that kind of massive jump from GPT-3 to GPT-4? I don't think so. I think what we have is a more polished version of GPT-3.5 uh, fixing these sort of factual issues and the hallucinations and then also fixing a lot of the issues where you are able to get uh, like the do anything now prompts and sort of jailbreak it and get around it. I think it's a, a more a sterilized version, but definitely better for certain purposes. Now, as always on this channel, we like to bring things back to entrepreneurship and how you can build businesses with this. I think the multimodal ability is going to open up so many doors for entrepreneurs looking to make money and build businesses in AI. We are already seeing huge businesses like Duolingo, Stripe, and Khan Academy integrate GPT-4 technology into their products. And I think this is a trend we're going to see uh, continue to increase over time. I'm currently working on a ton of interesting projects using GPT-4 that I can't wait to show you guys. So if you don't wanna miss out on that, please hit down below and subscribe to the channel.
the channel, hit the bell if you're interested in AI entrepreneurship content. That's all we talk about here on this channel. So thank you so much for watching. Please leave a like if you've enjoyed and head down below to the comment section and let me know your thoughts on GPT-4. Where do you see this going? What are the interesting use cases that you have? How are you planning to build businesses with this? I want to hear all of it and the community does too. So head down there, leave a comment and that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.